call a meeting to order. All seven of us are present. The indication this evening will be given by Brad Mendenhall, minister at the World Harvest Church, and Pledge of Allegiance. Chris, would you like to lead us in pledge? Good. Brad, thank you for being here. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pause here in these few brief moments before this meeting tonight just to honor you and to praise you, Lord God. Father, we thank you for this great city of Enid that you've given us all the opportunity to live in. And Father, we just lift her up to you tonight. And Father, for these wonderful leaders that you've given us, Lord, we pray with them uh, that you give them the wisdom that they need to lead us in this city. Father, we bless them and just speak a blessing over their families and Lord, the, any situation that they may be in, Lord God. Father, we just ask that you just work and move in their life. And Father God, we just thank you uh, that you are the king of our city, the Lord of our city. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Item number four, consider approval of minutes of the regular meeting of November the 19th, 2013. Which approved, well, we had one little change, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, there was uh, slight corrections. Do you want me to identify those for the record or do you recall where those, where they were? You got them, okay. I'd, I'd make a motion to approve with the information as noted. Second. Motion by Mike, a second by Ben. Further discussion, please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Under item 5, awards, presentation, and organizational business 5.1. Present the pet available for adoption at the city animal shelter. It's a good looking dog. Uh, my name is William Breeze, animal control officer at the animal shelter. And this is Paco. He's one of ours that are up for adoption now along with many others, cats and dogs, both. Uh, we have a lot to choose from. I'd like to see you guys come out there, take a look, and possibly take one home. Did you see that dog, what was it? Uh, it his name's Paco, and he's a French Bulldog and Boston Terrier mix. I think he's about two years old. Thank you. Under item six, hearings, uh, there are none. Now you've got 6.1, right? Oh, no, there is? 6.1. Is they are, they, there is none. I don't know. <laughs> My mother's not here. Under item six, there is 6.1, conduct a public hearing, conduct a public hearing rezoning property from R-3 residential mobile home neighborhood to C-1 light commercial Light Commercial District for lots one through 12, block 18, Garfield Edition, located at 1714 South 4th. Chris. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners, City Management. Uh, before I give you the details of the presentation, I'd like to ask you to watch a short video. It's about two, two and a half minutes long. Uh, it tells you what Forgotten Ministry is, what they do, and why they are important to our community. It'll come up for you right now. pretty cool little town and um, I was surprised to learn that there are apartments uh, not far at all from downtown even that um, the people who live there just lack basic humanitarian things and as I went to New View Apartments I just got this impression that it's just far enough off the main road that it can be forgotten.
of these carpets have roaches and roach eggs all under them. You know, they have to make sure and always watch the kids, make sure they're on the couches because the floors are just disgusting. Some of these staircases aren't safe at all for people to walk up. It's little kids, you know, little babies, they have to be carried upstairs because they can't skip the stairs. So it's very unsafe for them to just walk up to their front door. There's a lot of needs that are out here, not only um, with just the apartments and the units, but with all these kids' lives. You know, there's um, broken homes, abusive relationships, basically starting a generational curse. God has given us a, a very big burden for these people. I, I love the, the fact that you can come out and restore this apartment complex and, and make it livable, but you can see that in people's lives, these kids' lives, that that's what Jesus wants to do in their heart. We want to um, move some missionary families in here to work in this apartment um, full-time. We want to offer some programs to start changing um, this cycle, and we want to offer uh, money management, job training, how do I raise my kids, um, marriage counseling. Eventually what we want to do is introduce Christ into their life, because that's where the ultimate change is going to come. The more programs that they start to be involved in, the lower their rent gets. And with owning an apartment complex like that, um, we're not as focused on how much money we're making, but how much we're changing lives. There's a, there's a model called the Kingdom Center, and what it is is um, when a, a, an organization buys a, um, a hotel or an apartment complex, they go around to local businesses and they go around to local churches and they have them adopt certain apartments. They would come in with their workers, they would come in with their volunteers, they would come in with their congregation, and they would come in and they would renovate this whole apartment complex. And they would see the need that's in their community and they would offer not just money, but hands and feet that could reach out and, and be put to use to make a difference. They don't only just adopt the apartment, but they adopt the family and they start to invest in these people's lives. And they don't want to see just a, a change for a week, but they want to see a change in the long term. And we would love to, uh, to invite you to partner with us, to come along beside us and to see what God is doing and see what he can do when we really invest in an area that desperately needs him to be in the midst of it. Thank you, Dana. We'll bring my uh, PowerPoint up here real quick. This neighborhood is on South Leona Mitchell. Here is the current zoning. The uh, New View Apartments is right here on this uh, rectangle, zone R7. Uh, we do have some C1 here on this corner existing. Here's the site that we're looking at tonight. This is where Forgotten Ministry proposes to build a small uh, warehouse facility that they can house the donations that they expect to and will receive from the community. And those resources then will be used to renovate the apartments for the people that are living there. Uh, my next slide shows you the infrastructure. We're used to this when we talk about upzoning something from R3 to C1. In this case, we always want to look at the infrastructure. Is it adequate to support a higher intensity use? Our determination as staff as well as the planning commission that it was, the uh, sewer is right here. It's plenty to uh, house uh, plenty of capacity for the proposed use. Uh, we have water. Uh, we did do a fire flow. Um, they were extremely low. We did know us as the city of Enid that we had a broken valve or a valve partially opened at um, Garriott and Third. We have made that repair. We reflowed the fire hydrants in this general vicinity. It did bring up those fire flows, but it did not bring them up to the level that I can stand here tonight and tell you that we have adequate fire protection. Working with Fire Marshal Ken Helms, he is comfortable with the flows that we do have, and he is willing to approve the site plan to allow it to happen if the applicant is willing to sprinkle their storage facility, and they are. Uh, there's also another good news to it. We, the city of Enid, continue to look at our valves in this neighborhood, and as we find those that are in need of repair and we make those repairs, uh, before they bring their site plan to the Planning Commission, we may have enough volume of water that they won't have to sprinkle their warehouse. So we kind of are hoping for that end solution to be there. So that's how we, the city of Enid, are solving the water issue. The other issue we look at is, are the roads adequate for commercial use? 
Uh, these are residential roads. I talked with Forgotten Ministries. Uh, they would not stand semi tractor trailer type roads. They're not built for that. But the truck delivery that they're going to get from area lumber yards and churches is going to be more like the pickups that all of us drive all the way up to maybe a two and a half ton vehicle would be the largest. We feel that our road system is adequate for that. So for all of those reasons, it's staff's recommendation to approve. Very quickly, in the interest of full disclosure, my firm has done work on this particular project and I'm not gonna participate in the uh, discussion or voting for that reason. Okay. This is a hearing. There may be others in the audience that wish to speak to this mayor. I'll step away. Chris, does yes. the new water tower that's at 30th and Chestnut improve the water pressure there? Should it? Um, really what's hurting, or, or as a challenge, I should say, in this particular neighborhood is the mains are four and six inch, which okay. uh, it was appropriate at that point in time when we were in that part of Enid some 100 years ago. It would not be adequate today. And so what the fire marshal administers today, this existing system is having a hard time reaching that level of fire flow at the fire hydrants. It's just not capable. But we think with trailer maintenance, we're gonna continue to improve that. And, it's hard. and we hope that we get there without having to sprinkle the warehouse. Did you say they're gonna leave the sprinkling, sprinkler system in? Yes, they're willing to do that. They understand that, that if they don't sprinkle, then the project can't move forward and they're willing to do that, but we're paralleling our repair maintenance and we may be adequate and they don't have to. But if we aren't, they will. I mean, like that would help the resale of the property at some time. Sure. And, and, and in study session, we talked about this, but for the general uh, public's information, uh, warehouses are not allowed in C1. Uh, the correct zoning would be C3, but there are a lot of uses that are allowed in C3 that would be detrimental to what Forgotten Ministries is trying to accomplish in its immediate neighborhood. And, but we can consider a warehouse use under a use by review in C1, and the Planning Commission did that. And that's all been approved. All we're here now is subject tonight to the city commission approving the rezoning. If you do, then the project moves forward. Any other questions? I don't know if there are others willing, wishing to speak to this. Pardon me. Item seven, community development, item 7.1. Consider an ordinance rezoning property from R3, residential mobile home neighborhood district, neighborhood district to C1, light commercial district for lots one through 12, block 18, Garfield edition, located at 1714 South 4th Street. Chris. Thank you, this is a companion item to the hearing we just heard, staff's recommendation is to approve. I'll make a motion to approve second. the ordinance. Motion by Mike, a second by Tammy. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 6 0. Under item 8, administration, item 8.1, consider an ordinance amending the Enid Municipal Code 2003, amending Title 7, entitled Public Ways and Property, creating Chapter 7, entitled Art in Public Places, and providing for repealer savings clause, severability, and codification. Whitney? Um, the Art and Public Places Ordinance was previously reviewed at the November 12th regular session by Commissioner Stuber and has previously been bought, brought forward in study session. Um, I'll basically just walk you through each um, section of the ordinance. The purpose is to provide a means to fund the acquisition of public art uh, which shall become the, is part of the city's collection to create a visual arts commission and to provide means to select works, works of art for the collection. Um, this also provides means to have public art displayed on major city uh, construction projects. A definition section, as always, was included to define what each part of the ordinance means and what the intent of the ordinance was. Um, the commission may establish a art and public places fund. The fund will collect all donations from various organizations, individuals, anybody wanting to donate this, and that will roll over each year. Um, it outlines the eligible expenditures. These are 
are these can be used for the selection, acquisition, maintenance of commission, purchase or produced works of art or art spaces, and any administrative fees that are directly related to any of the outlined uh, uses of these, this fund. The commission may create the Visual Art Commission that would make recommendations to the mayor and board of commissioners. The VAC can administer this uh, chapter consisting of five members, four to be appointed by the mayor and board of commissioners, and at least one member to be a member of city council with three advisory members that would be non-voting members. The responsibilities of uh, being a member and attendance are the same as most of our other boards. There are no differences there, so I won't go through all of that. Um, the VAC shall adopt guidelines in accordance with the collection policy to identify suitable art, to facilitate the preservation of uh, art that has been purchased, prescribe a method of selection, prescribe procedures of the selection, acquisition, and display, and to set forth any other matter appropriate to the administration of this chapter. Um, under policies and procedures, the application process uh, uh, in summary contains the biography of the artist, uh, photograph, detailed description, as well as the matching funds. This also um, requires that these items go to the VAC and then on to city council for their final recommendation. Um, it cannot be approved until the uh, city council approves the request and no funds can be spent without the mayor and board of commissioners <coughs> approval. Uh, in performing the duties, the VAC shall um, give special attention to the following matters conceptual co compatibility of design with the site, appropriateness of the design, compatibility of design, design and location, creation of an internal sense of order, preservation and integration, appropriateness of materials and texture, textures, representation of a broad variety of taste within the community is also important. Oops. Uh, the display of public place, display of art in public places, um, it's, if it is on a private property location, it's a 50-50 match. The city's contribution cannot exceed $30,000. That's so that it is equal across the, the city. Nobody could receive more than that. It can be less than that if it is a lower cost and that's what the private property owner wants, but that limits, or that makes sure that everybody gets a fair amount or a fair uh, deal when dealing with this. Uh, installation, maintenance, alteration, uh, refinishing and moving of art in public places shall be done with in, consult in consultation with the artist whenever feasible. We will also maintain a complete list of all art and their locations here at the city offices. Uh, at the mayor and board of commissioners discretion, up to 1% of the construction cost of major city con construction projects may be set aside for the inclusion of public art um, and there is a percentage of 85% that may be used, the rest uh, leading into other areas. If it is appropriate to have it on that site, then it can be. If it's not, say we have major construction at the landfill and nobody would really see it and it would be the preference <laughs> to put it someplace else, it doesn't require that it has to be on site if it doesn't fit. Um, funds budgeted for public art pursuant to this chapter may be used for acquisition, installation, maintenance, repair, and administration of the, this program. The funds may be outlined in the percentages set out above in the major construction, if that is how they are wanting, or if that is how you deem them appropriate. All <coughs> art uh, acquired through this ordinance is owned by the city of Enid, even if it's on private property. It is sole ownership of the city of Enid and, whoops, the mayor and board of commissioners can review this ordinance at any time as needed. Any questions? I'll make, cool. I'll make a motion to approve with the exception of the VAC consisting of a seven board member versus a five board member. All other uh, things remaining the same. Second. So, motion by Mike, second by Tammy. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. <coughs> Motion carries seven zero. <clears throat> Item eight point two. Consider awarding a contract to Luckinville Inc. in Oklahoma for the water reclamation facility sludge building modification. Project number is S 0703 P. Contract one, clean, clean water state revolving fund number 
ORF-09-0019-CW, dash 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 and authorize the mayor to execute all contract documents as reviewed by the city attorney. Robert. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners, City Manager. Uh, this is a, an item to award a contract for a modification to our post processing building. I have uh, some slides here that we'll just go over fairly quickly. What we have here is the city of Enid in the southeast quadrant of the city is our uh, uh, water reclamation facility, and we have an enlarged uh, version here on the screen showing where the facility has been developed. And what we show in the red box is the um, uh, is our sludge pumping facility. And I'm going to go uh, next slide and show you that facility. This is what's shown in the red box. It is the uh, sludge pumping facility, new facility. What we this contract provides is for the placement of two uh, additional pumps in that facility, approximately the placement pumps in location shown in the red square, and then uh, the red lines are <coughs> uh, power supply and controls and wiring. Uh, we connect the pumps to the power system and the control system. Variable speed, speed controls to operate the system. Uh, the blue line is trying to be connected to the uh, sludge that comes off of our final clarifiers and. Uh, is a, a fairly close to um, slightly thicker than water uh, system. And then the green line shows where the pumps would discharge out to a new line going across the creek and tie into the uh, line where the primary sludge is pumped from existing pumps shown to the left. Uh, that is, had, that sludge has a consistency of, uh, of basically a syrup. It's very heavy and we want to mix those two to make it a proper uh, mixture to pump across the creek to the processing facility. Uh, the next slide shows the pipe system that goes to the existing water wastewater plant and the digesters where the sludge uh, is discharged and treated. Uh, we received uh, two bids uh, shown in the agenda item with the uh, bid for Luck and Bill Incorporated in the amount of $124,500 and it's recommended for award. Robert, was this, um, I know we've talked about sludge it seems like a lot lately but um, it, it was this because the um, facility was not designed for the, the capacity that it's being given or is it we just uh, what was the reason for this this improvement is being made to um, ensure the efficiency of pumping sludge across the facility the, the design that is in place and is in place, uh, we operations are able to move sludge across, but to do that, they <coughs> bring in additional water and mix water with the sludge, which we go in and take out on the other side. So it's very inefficient to process that we have to operate uh, to make the system work. Uh, this system is bringing us two pumps, mix the sludge, pump it across, so we, so we mix it with a lighter sludge instead of water. So we're not uh, uh, adding water and then taking back it out at a very inefficient. <coughs> Uh, but uh, you have bring a good question. We are in serious discussion with the design engineer on on, uh, on this pr uh, process. But that is the reason why this this recommendation is being made. It solves the issue. Of we have a, in a very inef inefficient and uh, an an effective uh, sludge uh, operation, and this it will resolve that problem. So will this? And now, by the you did see this. We did take bids on this uh, about a month and a half ago. Rejected those bids. And came back, so, I think, with uh, quite <coughs> any idea how long it will take us in savings to recoup the cost. I mean, is it is it going to be a significant amount annually that we that we're saving by adding this because of the inefficiencies that we're currently seeing? Yes, the the polymer that's being used to remove that water is a, is a is a tremendous cost to the city. So. Um, when he talks about mixing the sludge, there are two sludge that, that are within the pr plant. There's called the primary and secondary sludge. Primary sludge is this, if you'd say, like, like a thick cake of a mud, and then the secondary sludge is more of a soupy type stuff. So when you mix it together, it makes it easier to ship across the, the um, creek. Um, that allows us to push that over. Bef that would help us push it across. Now, currently, um, those two lines are not intermixed. What this does is allows us to intermix those two without adding extra water and then shipping that um, 
that sludge across the, the creek. Right now, the sludge for the uh, secondary sludge that goes across, across the creek, we do not have any problems shipping that across the creek. So our um, getting with engineering and putting our heads together, we felt that this would be the best solution to try to get everything across all at once. Has this been tried before? I mean, are we confident that this will will work? Uh, we're, we're pretty confident just because we're, we're adding the water that we are now and that same uh, saturation of water comes the same with uh, the secondary. Um, so the answer question, you know, there's a savings in, in polymer use and there also is, is uh, a savings in that uh, uh, there's just an operational concern when you, with the heavier sludge. There's maybe times that we can't get it across and it can cause operational problems and problems meaning permits. So in the long term, uh, you got the cost efficiency and the operational uh, efficiencies of meeting your permit that make it pretty is important that, to. Is that building large enough, Rob, to incorporate the other two facility or two circles that you can put in? Um, Aren't there three and three in each one of them? Yes, there you is. Add a fourth in each we one. Could, we, um, I'm not sure on the, on in the future. design aspect of it, but as of right now, the, the, the reason why this is such a big concern for us is because we add water. Um, the digesters that are over there now, um, because we add so much extra water that there is not a time what we call to digest or to for the bacteria to eat the, the, um, the waste. And we're not giving that enough time. So what we do is we fill up the digester and then we have to drain it off. And, and in order to do that, we're not letting the, the, the food to digest quicker. So we're having to use a lot of manpower and uh, um, not enough time for the digesting to work. So um, right now I can't say if we add it on that would work, but once this, um, this uh, fix, we should be able to do that. I'm not sure on the, um, the amount of digestion, if those, if we added on an extra one, would the digester work or not? I can't answer that right now. Digest is well, an interesting term. Yeah. yeah. But the, the sludge modification, sludge pumping ability was designed for two additional pumps. So we're, we're putting them in a little earlier than anticipated, but it's certainly designed for additional equipment. Which would take care of the future. And that should take care of the future. And take care of the future till, to up to 12 million gallons exceed 12 million gallons capacity, we will have to add, uh, we're at 6 million now, or basically 6 million. If we get past 12, we'll have to add additional pumps. And at, we'll have to, and at that point, uh, you have, we'll have to add additional sludge management across the, uh, across the creek too. That, that, that system has a 10 million gallon a day capacity, but that's some years down the road before we reach that. But we always knew that. I mean, that's in the plan to eventually. We do plan on growing. Do, do we have do we have any other projects uh, anticipated uh, in the wastewater treatment plant, or is this going to wind it up? Well, there are several other projects, Commissioner. We're we're uh, preparing that update for you. Uh, probably within the next 30 days, we'll be bringing you show where we are in this project and and some of the challenges we're facing. Okay. Maybe I didn't hear you say it exactly right, but did you say that basically we're paying $150,000? Design flaw in the original design. I mean, why are we? We didn't know how thick the sludge was when we built this new plant. Yes. That, yeah, Sorry. that's probably the case. Well, no, we're not happy with the design that we received from our program manager. Well, let's let's case. pay for this hundred twenty. That, that's part of what you're going to see in the next thirty days. It, this is this is one of many items with which we we have a disagreement with our project manager. Is this is this something that could they could wait until we no. have those discussions? Or no, we we have no. for the past nine months at least <clears throat> attempted to resolve it under the current design, and it's our uh, our opinion that that's not satisfactory, mm -hmm. and it's creating a problem we can't live with. Just as uh, we're, we're we're solving a problem upstream that dead ends it downstream. And by doing this, we'll say this is our solution. This is the cost. You know, we would like help with this. I don't, I don't see, uh, I, if I were a bad man, I'd tell you today that we're probably going to end up court on this issue. Well, that's what we have lawyers for. <laughs> and we have some good ones. I'll make a motion to, uh, to approve. Second. Motion by Mike. Second. Ben, further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 6-1. Thank you. 
Item 8.3, consider awarding a contract to Escrow Painting, Inc., Enid, Oklahoma, for the downtown signal pole painting, project number R-1404A, and authorize the mayor to execute all contract documents after review by the city attorney. Chris. Thank you. Uh, as you know, um, there was a request to take a look at our and refinish and refurbish our downtown lighting poles. This is an example of what we have currently on most of the corners. This is the one that we did as a prototype. Uh, after we did that prototype and we accepted the, uh, the process and the, and the uh, procedures that they were using, we bid this out. We got uh, three bids. Escrow painting was the lowest bid at 91,000, almost 92. Um, we're happy with the process and the procedures. Uh, we do know that this will happen at night for the most part to minimize the impact to downtown traffic, which means it will be slow progress. Additionally, since we're using an epoxy primer and a urethane paint, we will not be able to have them do light poles at less than 50 degrees. Having said that, um, we're kind of expecting that the, that it'll, it'll you know, obviously an extended period of performance. We're projecting <coughs> sometime in, the, in June 2014 uh, dependent on weather. It's our recommendation that we approve this contract and get them started. I have seen the, I think, I thought they did a test at Maine, the southwest corner of Maine, and then I saw another one Grand, on Broadway, yes, and then another one on Broadway that <coughs> looked, uh, I think, even better, and I just was driving, it, it looked like we've it only just, done one. Just the one? Yes. Volunteers did the other one. I, I don't know. I, yes, sir. I don't know how many coats they're putting on here, but we're. This is going to cost <coughs> about two thousand dollars a pole. They will take the poles down, take the heads off, prep the the poles and arms, put down an epoxy primer, put down. They can't, a they can't paint them up. Boy, uh, well, you can't get to them. It's easier if you bring them down. <laughs> you have to take the heads off of them so you can get to them. You can get to all of it. This sounds awfully expensive. It is. We could do. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, well, we don't have to do it either. Yeah. You know, we could do a paintbrush. You, you all told last. us you wanted them yes. painted. We and this is the lowest well, yeah, we I will make the motion to to award the I contract. I understand Second. that they need to be painted, but two thousand bucks a pole. Wow. I wouldn't do it for that. Yeah, I would. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll get you rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come and watch if you don't mind. We've got, I, I we've got business. Hey, we have a lot of business in sprucing up downtown. We have to do our part. That's right. What, what color? It'll be a black satin. Oh, yeah. I'm sharp. It, are they green now? No, they're, no, they're, they're kind of They're black. peeling black now. Speckled. <laughs> yeah. they, they've lost a little Old paint. stain color. Yeah. We have a motion by Mike. Second. Second by Ben. Right. Further discussion, please. Question, is this a local company? Yes, I believe they are from Enid, as I recall. Yes, it says Enid, Oklahoma. Yeah, they're Enid, Oklahoma. Further questions or discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. Seven. Item 8.4 Consider approval of amendment number 2 to owner engineer agreement dated April 16, 2013, with Cobb Engineering Company, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, for construction administration of Southgate Road, road realignment to facilitate the extension of runway 17 35 at the Enid Woodring Regional Airport to the south. <clears throat> and reduction of amendment number one, design fee by $5,000. Oh, no. Mr. Mayor, City Commissioners, Mr. City Manager, uh, this amendment two is to oversee the construction of the relocate of Southgate Road for the runway extension. It includes 9,300, which is actually passed through to the subcontractor of Mustang Gas, an agreement we made because some of the road is going to go over at 90 degrees uh, over a couple of the, uh, the gas lines out there, and they need to, to oversee this. There's also a clause in this amendment which reduces the previous amendment, Amendment 1, which was for the design of this road. If you recall, we had to go after, go after additional land because of another gas line that was out there, and Cobb Engineering agreed to split that cost with us, and this clause reduces his fee by $5,000 in that previous amendment. Move to approve. I second. 
Motion by Ben, second by Mike. Uh, discussion? What was the reason that we decided to split the fee? What was the, we're taking half the blame for them not getting it right the first time? We would have had to pay about $5,000 for an acre anyway if we had bought that in the beginning. And uh, the blame is, is broken up a little bit between Oki and uh, Cobb Engineering. So we sat down with them because the cost of the acre was now 10,000 versus 5,000. And we would have again had to pay 5,000 for it had we purchased it three or four months ago. Uh, they agreed to pay that additional, if you will, $5,000. The additional that was bought now, is it the same price that was originally bought per acre? If we had purchased it today and it was the original price, we would have paid 5,000 per acre. But he also upped the price by this little extra deal. At you. Exactly what happened. We have a motion. Second. Any motion? Second. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carried 6 1. Item 8.5 consider approval of amendment number three to owner engineer agreement dated April 16, 2013 with Cobb Engineering Company, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, for design of runway 17 dash, or slash 35 extension at the Enid Woodring Regional Airport. Eleanor? This is the amendment for the design of the runway extension to include the parallel taxiway and the lights along the runway and the taxiways. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Ben, second by Tammy. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 8.6, consider awarding a contract to Cummins Construction Company, Inc., Enid, Oklahoma, for construction of the Southgate Road Realignment Project number R-1316A, and authorize the mayor to execute all contract documents after review by the city attorney. No, no. This is the actual construction of the Southgate Road realignment. We had two bids, uh, Cummins Construction and Henson. Cummins was the uh, lowest responsible. Recommend approval. Um, to, go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mike, second by Ben. Oh, oh no, do we have any, when, when do we expect them to have that completed? We're, the entire project, we're estimating uh, this mm, December of next year. You're talking about just the road project. Oh, I'm sorry. The road project uh, will take about five months. I expect maybe by the end of uh, May. They actually won't begin the major construction until the And then another seven months to the end of 2014 to finish. Right. The runway project will have started by then, so. Tandem. Further discussion or questions? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. Item 8.7 <clears throat> Consider an ordinance amending the Enid Municipal Code section requiring City of Enid approval of any taxi rate changes, Title III, Chapter 9, Article A, Sections 3 9A 1. Second. Motion. <laughs> Motion by David, second by Ben. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 9, consent. Move to approve. Motion by Ben to approve. Second. Second by Tammy. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 10, we will now recess to convene as the Enid Municipal Authority. All trustees of the Enid Municipal Authority are in attendance at the regular meeting. Item 12, Enid Municipal Authority regular meeting and session. Item 12.1, approval of claims in the amount of $948,250.46. Move to approve. Motion by Ben. Second, Second by Mike. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. We'll now adjourn to convene as the Enid Economic Development Authority. 
All trustees of the Enid Economic Development Authority are present. Under the Enid Economic Development Authority regular meeting, item 15.1, approval of claims in the amount of $6,000. Make a motion to approve. Motion by Mike. Second. Second by Ben. Further discussion? <coughs> Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. We'll now adjourn to reconvene as the Enid City Commission under item 17, public discussion. No one signed up. I'll now entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Motion by Mike. Second. Second by Ben. Please cast your, please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. No, not at all.